Hello everybody, and welcome to the second lesson in the Systems of Equations unit here. And the next thing we're going to be learning about is a method for solving systems of equations known as combination. Now, when you're going to use combination, this is going to be something you use when you have one or more of the variables in the equations given that are equal or exact opposites when it comes to their coefficient values. Keep in mind the coefficient, again, is the number that's in front of the variable. So we're looking at they have the same number or the opposite number. So when I say opposite numbers, I'm talking like 2 versus negative 2 or you know 4 versus negative 4. Like They have the same amount. They might be positive or negative. Uh, so they're either exactly the same or they're not. Uh, they're just opposites but the same number. Uh, so when you do these, you're simply going to either add or subtract, depending on whether they are the same or they are opposites, one whole equation from the other by combining the like terms and eliminating at least one variable in the process. Then you're just going to solve for the remaining variable. So let's look at one example of how this might look. When I look at these two equations, I got 2x plus 4y equals 8. 3x minus 4y equals 2. When I look at the numbers, the coefficients, I got a 2 and a 3, a 4 and a negative 4, and then an 8 and a 2. Now when I look over these, um, the coefficients are the 2 and the 4, the 3 and the negative 4. The 4 and the negative 4 are opposites. They're, they both have a 4, one's positive, one's negative. When you got a positive and a negative, all you've got to do is just simply add the two equations together. So when I look at this, 2x plus 3x makes 5x. Sorry about that. I got a little bit of lag. 5x. There we go. 4y minus 4y. 4y plus negative 4y cancels. So that gets rid of y. And I got 8 plus 2 is 10. And I divide by 5 on both sides and I get x is 2. And from here, I can just plug that x equals 2 into one of these two equations and solve. Let's take the first one, for example. If I just put a parenthesis where x goes and plug the number I got in, I put 2 in for x plus 4y equals 8. Okay. Then I can continue to solve. I would go here, and then 2 times 2 is 4 plus... 4y equals 8. I would subtract the 4 on both sides. I would get 4y equals 4. And then I would divide by 4 on both sides. And I get y equals 1. So there's my solution. My solution would become 2, comma, 1. And that would mean x is 2, y is 1. If I were to double check my answer, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 times 1 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, that is true. 3 times x, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4 times y, 4 times 1 is 4, 6 minus 4 equals 2, that is true. So it checks out. Now, what happens if you have, um, in this case, I think that's supposed to be a positive, I think I mistyped that, let me just change that really quick. I wanted to do this. And so, and I also wanted to do this. There we go. All right, so let's say that I have this next. I've got 6x minus 5y equals 17. 6x minus 8y equals 1. Now if I look at the coefficients, I got a 6, a 5, another 6, and a minus 8. The 6s are equal to each other, but they're exactly the same. So when you got two things that are exactly the same, what you're going to want to do is change the signs of every single thing that you see in these equations here. I think I meant to have this as a negative one as well. Let me just add a little negative sign there. So when I see this, I'm gonna subtract the entire second equation. To do that, I'm gonna change every sign. I'm gonna put a minus here. The minus becomes a plus. This minus becomes a plus. And then I follow through on that. 6x minus 6x cancels. Negative five plus eight makes 3y equals 17 plus 1, 18. And then I would divide both sides by 3, and I get y equals 6. 
Then I can plug that into one of the two equations and find x. So why don't I do this with the text here? So 6x, I haven't found x yet, minus 5y, now I said 5 times 6 in this case, equals 17. Okay? And then I would say 6x, oops, 6x minus 30 equals 17. Then I would go 6x. I'd add the 30 to both sides, so that would be 47. And then that makes x equal 47 over 6, which is roughly, that's almost 8. It's like 7 point, probably 9 something or 8 something. I'll double check in the calculator really fast. So 47 divided by 6, 7.8, yeah, 7.83. Cool. And then that means my solutions would be 7.8 and 6. Cool. Now, when we are doing uh, systems of equations, one thing I want to point out now, now that it's probably bound to come up at some point, is the idea of special solutions. Sometimes when you eliminate uh, variables here in this way, you might see a situation where you end up eliminating both variables from the equation. And the numbers afterwards then can either create an equation where uh, it is true and you have zeros on both sides of the equation, or it's a false equation where you have something that's not a true statement. So let's take a look at what that could mean. So let's say that we have this example right here. And this one here is a uh, system we can solve by combination. I'm gonna go ahead and combine them. But what I notice is I got a positive three and a negative three, they cancel, there's nothing there. I got a positive six and a negative six. And I add those again and those also cancel. So there's nothing left on the side of the equation. So I put a zero equals Negative 10 plus 10 is also 0. I ask myself, is this true or is this false? Well, 0 equals 0 is a true statement. Therefore, there are an infinite number of possibilities. So you can write the words infinitely many solutions. You can also, instead, just write the infinity sign. And another thing you can even write if you wanted to is all real numbers. These are three different ways to represent the same thing. Infinitely many solutions, infinity symbol or all real numbers. I'll accept any of the three answers. All this is saying is you can put any number at all in for both x and y in these equations does not matter which number you choose for either one of them. As long as you're true in putting in that they're the same number in both of these systems, let's say you did one here and one here for x, two here and two here for y, you can put any number you want that's in the existence of numbers that's a real number. These two equations will always present a true system. The system will work. They're exact opposites uh, equations. Now let's take a look at these guys. Let's use the equal values method that we learned last class. y equals 3x minus 6, y equals 3x plus 4. So I'm going to go ahead and just make these two equal to each other. 3x minus 6 equals 3x plus 4. Now if I'm solving this, I want to move 3x to either one of the sides. I would rather move the right 3x to the left and then add the 6 to the other side personally. So 3x minus 3x creates a 0. And then if I add the, 10, the 6 to the other side, it creates a 10. Then I ask myself, is this a true statement? Does 0 equal 10? No, 0 does not, in fact, equal 10. So that is false, actually. And because that is false, there is no solution. There are no solutions. You cannot put any number into either of these equations for x or y to create a true statement. And simply put, it's because y cannot equal this and this at the same time. 
if you already have 3 of x minusing 6 equal y, you cannot take that same 3 of x and add 4 to it to create the same value. It wouldn't make sense. So for that reason, it's a false system and there are no solutions.